Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. There's so much to cover today, guys. So much to cover. Um, it's it's crazy what's going on in this world, but these are the times of the apocalypse. These are the times of the great unveiling. And the apocalypse is not dogmatically what most people might expect. No, I, I mean, they they really have this word taken hostage to mean something that's really not what it is so we have to kind of define that word apocalypse so please do subscribe both channels get that little bell clicked and we do put out videos probably 360 days a year so just about every single day there will be a video up on one or both channels evolutionary and also on ee arts uh at this point in time i'm still debating where to put this because i had another video ready to go uh, lots of stuff going on earth change wise, but this I wanted to have its own video because this is actually as we've gone deeper into this um, The more and more significant this has become we we see many different quote-unquote UFO fireball sightings uh, over the years and And they don't feel as significant as what we see right here. This is in the sky over Long Island Sound heading more or less east Any guesses? Hmm. Well, we're gonna tell you what we what we've gotten and Just this alone is pretty uh, Impressive and you might take it. I mean really it reminds me of a comet more, you know with the way the tail is Well, it, it seems like it's pretty controlled and going steady there yeah and you know if this was the only sighting uh it would be again very interesting and curious but here you see connecticut about eight o'clock so again you know connecticut long island sound could see the same object because they are right across from each other long island sound you know anywhere from 10 to 12 miles typically is is the distance from connecticut to long island uh, from memory as I grew up over there and You know it, this this starts to come into the scene right there I'm taking a video that's amazing Jackson that's so far away Guys that shit doesn't happen. It's either a UFO or a fucking comet. Look at the tail. No plane makes that Okay. <laughs> you know, expletive deleted. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'm getting chills right now. Um, because, you know, this is something, it's a major sighting. It's, it's not a comet. And again, a lot of times when we call things comets, they're not exactly what we've been made to believe. No, and, and there's gonna science is gonna have their own definition for what this is too. Absolutely. So it was also seen over Washington. Unsure of what flew over DC tonight, seven forty PM. And of course, you know, the more light pollution, the harder to make it out. But you could still clearly see it. You could even see it with its tail. What's this? This is over Brooklyn. This is a major, major sighting. And again, at some point, they're probably going to say, oh, that was SpaceX. That was space junk. Oh, that was... Uh, a rocket. Oh, that was this. Oh, that was that. They'll, of course, try to cover it up because they can't tell you what it really is. As you see here, does anybody know what this is? Doesn't that ring back memories? Look at these. Look at these paintings from the Middle Ages, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Um, most of these I'm going to bring up were, were done, you know, between a thousand, 1400, um, you know, it's fascinating too, because these are religiously flavored, you know, this is a crucifixion, angels, but then distinguishing that there's these clearly vehicles with people in them, but yet they have that same sort of shape. Do they not? 
I could see where somebody would view this and then paint that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, looking at this just right away when I asked, okay, who is this? Um, they came, they came back with, well, they're coming for a visit. So of course I'm like, okay, who's visiting who? And it came back with, it's, um, a treaty. It's a policy. It's an upgrade. It has to do with the Vatican. It has to do with the controllers on this platform. And it also has to do with, uh, controllers from, Mars. So this was really interesting when this showed up, the information that came through. It did feel very matter of fact, you know, they're coming for a visit. Um, so this is this is what we have. Interesting that we have this uh, release. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence, NIM Aviation. And what do you see? You see a fighter jet, a, a bomber, you see a satellite representation, you see a classic flying saucer. This is the official website of the U.S. government. Alert! There's an icon of a UFO at the bottom of the insignia for the National Intelligence Manager for Aviation Unit of the government. Is this a subtle message hidden in plain sight? Uh, yes. Yes, because it's time. Everything is going to be revealed. Everything is going to be revealed. There's a reason why these paintings were inspired to give us this message that you could look at it from the standpoint that, again, it's covering the religious iconography. There's angelic beings, but to distinguish from the angelic beings, there are beings that use technology to fly in the sky in the ancient days. They knew this. And again, when you go into the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the the Vedic um, books themselves, it's it's clear. It's it's clearly spoken that there are beings that we would take as extraterrestrials and interdimensional in nature that interact with humans on Earth on a regular basis. It was known accepted it was just a, a fact it was just a, a straight out fact so they knew this indigenous people can tell you you know people the Cherokee will tell you and you know I remember having conversations with a friend uh, that's on the reservation uh, there in North Carolina <clears throat> and him sharing what what they're taught that they don't talk they don't teach and and speak of with uh, others openly, but know that obviously, yes, you know there are extraterrestrials, there are interdimensional beings. And again, when we look to the reliefs, the pictures, the the pottery, the artwork, everything that's showing us, these beings that are flying with wings in the sky they're again trying to tell us humans being basically led with their hands bound behind their hand their their backs tied at the neck this is what was done to slaves that were caught in africa and brought to work the plantations this is exactly how they were brought on to uh, north american soil and, and other places from africa and that's, you know, gone on because this is what we learn from the controllers. And again, here you can see beings that are much taller than humans as the humans are all bound as they are viewed as slaves. Meanwhile, the representation of a being up in a ship and, you know, they're being greeted by these beings. Now, they're again have been stories of these red-headed giants with particular appetites. And, you know, in the modern, quote-unquote, modern mythos, some have been killed in pitched battles with the U.S. military. And we have these pictures of these big brutes. And, you know, would they really fight like this? Well, 
again, you know, there's a lot of distortions and there's a lot of different beings of, of different technologies, uh, of different backgrounds that get lumped into the same category. As again, not all aliens, not all interdimensional beings are demons. No, I mean, that is just, that's again as silly as saying, you know, every single bird in the sky is a sparrow when you're looking at an eagle or a hawk. They're very, very different. Not every single fish in the sea uh, is a shark. You know, there's all different types. That's, you, know, you can't make these bl blanket statements. Well, you could, but it, it's just made out of ignorance and not really understanding the bigger picture. We have actual skulls of these beings that we will call the EGG. Uh, and there are a couple different species, but typically redheaded with elongated skulls. There's a reason why the popes wear the pope's hat. And again, some of it traces back to these legends of beings coming out of the sea and teaching mankind many secrets. But again, not all these beings are the same beings. You'll have some that lump all these different gods and goddesses, quote unquote. We were just talking yesterday and I was just saying to Cindy, you know, uh, it's like all the gods and the goddesses, they're all extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings. And it's like, yeah, of course, that's what they are. That's what they are. It doesn't mean there's not a creator of this universe, but then again, the creator of this universe wouldn't be a terrestrial, it wouldn't be bound to, you know, <laughs> having its creation uh, start here on Earth. So again, obviously, it's going to be an extraterrestrial. Obviously. And, and the same thing, again, can be said for many other beings. These simply means they don't come from here. There's life all over out there. And a lot of people are in denial because they can't face that their whole paradigm is going to be shaken. And yes, you know, our paradigms are going to be shaken in these times. You're going to see things that are going to blow your mind. You're going to be introduced to beings that are not of this world. And that's not too far off. This is all getting people ready for what's coming. And again, these beings with these elongated skulls, well, we, we find them in the Black Sea area. We find them in Peru as well. So th they're over there in Eurasia and they're over in South America. Why? Well, again, we can look to the legends and we see that there were many different outposts of these beings that we call the Anunnaki and the Ijiji. Now, the Anunnaki use the Ijiji. The Ijiji are subservient to the Anunnaki um, in that the Ijiji are 3D beings. So they can interact with us physically when the Anunnaki can't, or when it takes the Anunnaki more energy um, and you know, to, to basically manifest in front of us because the Anunnaki are lower fourth density beings. And those that we call the Draco are, again, fourth density beings. So they're more real when we are in dream time, per se, when we are in fourth density ourselves or when we're out of the body. When we die, that's where we typically go. We go into fourth density existence. When we're sleeping, we're in fourth density. When we're awake, we're in third density when we're in these vehicles. Well, the GG are third density beings, and that's why they are utilized in this age to interact with humanity. And, and this is the beings that are here uh, coming in the skies that we have seen these this ship you know, what's coming in, it, it really doesn't feel good at all. It's like my, my whole energy field is coming up against a place of resistance. And whenever I deal with that, I, I look and I look a little bit further and I have to feel into it more. And these beings are coming. They have a, a enormous amount of mind control working inside of them they have these understandings their brains are bigger the pineal gland is bigger they're coming here and they're going to be stationed at certain monuments to put out a vibration of information that, that i'm feeling right now it's a whole lot of resistance so that also is what is coming in is these beings have a certain amount of power and these are power that we don't understand that just located in their mind so these are some reasons why these specific ones are, are coming to 
move and shift and change things. Yeah. And so, you know, again, if you want to take it from a biblical sense, this is the woe to you, o earth and sea. Again, so the EGG can, and there is one EGG that's been in charge here physically on earth, hidden in the shadows, uh, and is still one of the original from the beginning of this dark age that's here. And so, you know, that is who the popes, the, the, the leaders of, you know, all the religious organizations at the upper echelon, the very, very upper echelon, and the politicians take their orders from. But then we do get visits, too, from others from Mars, per se. Again, the GG were on Mars before coming to Earth. But again, they are also um, beings that do travel and they do have the ability to travel there are again reptilian beings working with humans on mars right now mining and and if if you look to the evidence of gigantic mining operations all over this planet that are very ancient in scope it's undeniable it's undeniable there was a great video and I, i forget who did it we could try to look it up again got well over a million views and this channel was so buried uh, because they did such a good job exposing this it's always been an extraterrestrial interdimensional thing always at the depth of the darkness of this Kali Yuga the dark age they will work to convince us that we're all alone there's nobody but us Oh, yeah, sure. That way we don't start questioning things. And we don't realize that the entire system we are living in is a slave system. It still is a slave system. Why do we go to work? We're working for them. We're still working the planet for them. Nothing has changed. Mm -mm. No, and, and, you know, they're, they're putting together these energies to create further control. And what... I'm also seeing, hearing, feeling is that I don't believe it's going to be a sudden jolt of information because they don't want to scatter the masses. They don't want people to just drop their jobs and go. They still need people in place. And that's why whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen on paper. They're going to, it's for themselves and then they're going to implement something. And what I keep going back to is that video we did about the Vatican and, you know, having all of its money pulled in by September 30th. So I I feel this also has to do with that, uh, a meeting having to do with that information that was out earlier as well. Absolutely. Yes. Big, big changes afoot. So guys, uh, we'll cover more as, as it becomes available and more information that comes through. We'll, we'll share with you guys what we get when we go into meditation and it, when we get Cindy under uh, for channeling. As always, stay prepared out there. Keep putting the positive vibrations out there too. Just because these beings have more technology, uh, have bigger pineal glands than most people on, on Earth, doesn't mean that we don't have our own free will doesn't mean that we can't affect our own change doesn't mean that we can't be liberated because we will Mm -hmm. and obviously they are afraid of us because they don't want to just step out so they know we have power absolutely so may you be blessed by the true creator of the universe namaste namaste